Oh, Joshua, we have the same socks. Nope, lies. Those I are my like... socks. You did that to yourself. You're doing great. Why won't you get? I bought you some socks when we were in New Orleans. Is that my water? It doesn't that even matter. Sound. Women don't sound, want their the stuff. Outtakes. They you want bought. your stuff. I bought her sock because obviously it's a sock problem. But hey, y'all. So listen. <laughs> this week we are in Charlotte. Hence the background. Hence Melissa sitting on this side of the bed so she can get warm. <laughs> it's all of these things that are occurring. Uh, so what we want to do, of course, as always, is shout out our sponsor for the tour, the Love and Laugh Hour tour, um, and that is African Pride. You will get a full-size box with all of these wonderful, great products. And I get testimonials all of the time from people who actually use the samples and they say that it is amazing. And FYI, I'm thinking about going natural again. Pray my strength, we'll figure it out. In the meantime, between time, if you're interested in winning this box, Please, all you have to do is comment. We're going to go with YouTube again. And all you have to do is comment African Pride. We'll randomly pick a winner, send you out a box, and that's it. I'm trying to win a box, too. <laughs> Let's start the show. All right. <laughs> Podcast. I am your husband, Kev on stage, and I am joined by my husband and co-host, the Kev on stage. And we have here a very special guest. His name is Jason Fredericks. He is Kevin's older the brother, the brother of Kev on stage. Okay, the Jason. Fredericks. Say hello to the people. Hello to the people. Love our world. I'm very happy to be here. First time, uh, very America, America. <laughs> First time caller, long time listener. Right, right, right. <laughs> Um, so we're gonna get into a pretty heavy episode. So I don't know, maybe have a box of Kleenex with you. I'm not gonna cry. I'm not crying. I'm not crying. I'm not crying. I didn't want to do this episode, so I'm I'm not gonna feel my feelings. I will not be going to roll. No, no, no. All right. So what we're gonna do, um, as always, is start with the this and that question. Are you guys ready? No, no, no. This, I say yes. Okay. This is all right. Shout out to Kurt Franklin. Um, this is a submitted that or this. I said it right. Thank you, Lisa. Uh, people have been getting on me about it. Okay, here we go. Would you rather be effortlessly, breathtakingly gorgeous for the rest of your life at any age, but no matter what you do, you cannot break $25,000 a year? Oh, shoot. Or be <laughs> extremely rich, making seven to eight figures effortlessly, but absolutely unattractive for the rest of your life? Make me ugly. If you are attractive and broke, hold on before you get to your make question. Make me something of ugly. Nothing will help you make more money. Not modeling, marriage, or extracurricular activities. You're just walking around pretty. No, you just or handsome. know. Yes. Stop. No matter what you do or who you do it with, you will still individually and or collectively never break $25,000. That is your ceiling. If you are extremely wealthy but unattractive, you cannot use any of your money. You cannot use any or anyone else's for favors to have done on your face or body or alterations made to your appearance ever. You guys are amazing. Love your podcasts and blogs. So much needed and appreciated. We love you. And happy anniversary. Thank you. All right. Your answers, please. Who's first? I'll be ugly. You're going to be broke. Bro, I mean, no, I'll be rich, you'll be rich and but ugly. ugly. Because money... Shakes the way people see you. Ain't no Money, ugly millionaires. Power. I'm cute. Uh, Jay Z. Jay Z. That's I was Jay-Z. going there. I ain't no ugly billionaires. I'm cute. He said billionaires. Okay. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Lil Wayne, Seal. There's a lot of ugly men who make life. I don't mm-hmm. even know how handsome I am. But shoot, me and pretty handsome. Ain't, I'm cool. My beard don't feel in all the way. But no, and that's more life than being handsome. True. People without like uh, who are handsome or have better personalities, they're more fun to be around. Pretty people just be like, "Oh, look at me, I'm pretty, uh, I'm handsome." Okay, so you asked your answer. Yeah, make Broke, me ugly. I mean, uh, wealthy but ugly. Yes, Jay. I'll be a dog. <laughs> we fail. I am for right. Joshua. Right. Man, get that. Get the money. The money make is the power. Okay, money is the power. I think I'm gonna go with. I think I am too. I don't know that I really actually. I don't know. You would not be pretty for twenty five k. I'm trying to think of the life that you can have for twenty five thousand dollars. You can't. 
We made that money before. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. 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 Remember when Lisa worked in the lunchroom at the kids' school? <laughs> Okay. Get the hair net. Get the hair net on. That's what you, you ain't gonna do no twenty five thousand dollars. Why would you say that? Because that's we made that money. We were first married. But how, do I have I ever experienced this life? No. If I only know the life of twenty five thousand dollars, what will what will being pretty do for you? I don't know. get you the billionaire that's ugly. No, you can't use it for your personal gains. Mm -hmm. It's not personal gains. It is personal it's, gains. It's looks. No, if I look up upon a woman and see the 25000 I shall take her unto you. Yeah, okay, yeah. I'm going to go with ugly. I shall take her unto me. <laughs> nah, At least nah. then I can do what I want to do. Yeah, now nah, I do what I want. Now nah, I do what I want. Yeah, we're going to go with that. Okay. <laughs> So final answers that are in. So ugly, now, ugly, ugly, ugly. <laughs> just ugly. I think yeah, when no. you get to a certain age and you understand That's the value true. of money, yes. you know, then you you realize that looks aren't everything, and that you can be for men, you can be a provider, you can do everything that you want to do as a man. It's gonna go beyond the looks. So. Beauty ain't a personality, right? Beauty is not a personality. And but beauty what I is 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 um. Subjective. But it is, and but what I I think what I was like kind of struggling with is the idea that sometimes beauty is power. Like pretty privilege is a thing. Oh, for sure. But in her like, let me explain. She kind of took away the power that is yes. beauty. So then you lose that. Beauty's only skin deep. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. Okay, here we go. Ready? Oh. Kevin has all types of anxiety about this. Episode. I only cried so bad on that Periscope when I was talking about Jade. Yeah. I don't want to feel that way. I what we're gonna do today is don't cry, Kes. I'm not crying. I'm not gonna cry either. <laughs> He's my brother and I love him like my son. He's my brother and I love him. I'm not gonna say him. We Who was that on? Brother, brother to brother, brother on BT. Yeah. They, they were trying to be new pop stars and dudes were like 35. They were. Fighting what? and stuff. Right. That was terrible. We thought they were going to make it. They were like, hold up, y'all are 35? But they kept, they couldn't get, they were just arguing too much. Yeah, they, they were, were fighting. Were too much internal. They Where are they now? Like brother that. to brother, if you guys are in the comments, please tag us. Are we put, y'all want to be put? We'll do the conference. We'll do the conference. <laughs> right, right. Get at me, brother to brother. I need to help people. Okay, here we go. So what we're going to do today is talk about, if you don't know Jason's story, he was diagnosed with melanoma. No, mesothelioma. <laughs> That's what you get when you watch TV like that. Sal Vanilla? How do you say it? Multiple, multiple myeloma. Multiple myeloma. Multiple myeloma. In 2017. In 2017. July. 2017. Hey, was it two years already? Yeah, July 2017. Um, Probably about July 9th. Don't say probably about and then have an exact date. Yeah, I just remember because we got in the, me and Julian got in the minor car accident. Okay, wait, before you go there. Okay. Okay, yeah, we're already starting. Okay, This so, is yawn tier, so that doesn't count. I'm still holding fast. So Jason was, you're holding fast, okay. Jason was diagnosed with multiple myeloma mm -hmm. in July of 2017. Yeah. And from there, obviously, there's like a roller coaster of events that happen and a roller coaster of emotions, I would imagine, that also happen. Right. And so we want to talk about, obviously, when you say your vows and you get married, one of the things that, you know, the common traditional vow is in sickness and health, better mm -hmm. and worse. Mm -hmm. And um, there's nothing like a diagnosis such as cancer to like test um, what that means like have that like actually yeah. tested in real life so what we want to do is kind of go through and discuss um the diagnosis how it affected you how it affected your marriage how it affected your family um and like all of that okay well i think the precursor in 2017 is what people have to understand is that i was dealing with severe back pain if you guys remember for a year and a half mm -hmm. so a year and a half i was going to the chiropractor mm -hmm. like one day just my back started hurting i didn't fall mm -hmm. i didn't i anything you know playing basketball i didn't do anything rough it was almost like like uh you woke up and you slept wrong mm -hmm. so i thought i was slept wrong like, oh my back just been bothering me just bothering me bother me then after a while it's like okay i'm gonna go to the chiropractor because when your back hurts you go to the right. chiropractor i remember actually you that period of time where you were like constantly complaining about your life i mean your life your back <laughs> and then um constantly going to the chiropractor i actually yeah. distinctly remember that yeah i was just it's almost like there was nothing else that i could do was it helpful you know or did you, it provide relief i thought it was and um 
it, I, I, you, because it's supposed to, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know what I mean? So it's like, they were doing something. They could find some stuff in my back. Um, that we're like, yeah, this is wrong, but chiropractors do that anyway. There's all if you go to a chiropractor, they're gonna be like, you, you ain't aligned, mm -hmm. you know, you ain't in the will of God. Yeah, you're not. So they can always find something. What was when I look back, what was um, strange to me? My doctor kept saying, you should be better by now. Mm. But I, he was like, keep coming. We're gonna keep working on it. The keep chiropractor it. doctor. The chiropractor mm. doctor. He was a good doctor too. Good, good, clean. And good, good, clean, wholesome. <laughs> and so. Um, it was, I, I kept going there. He didn't recommend you go to an actual doctor? No, because based off everything he saw that I, that's what I should be doing. Mm -hmm. And that's where I was having the pain. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it was it was uh, the randomness of the pain. Like nothing had happened. So there was no. Was it chronic back pain or was it just like spurts? No, it was, it was chronic. Like it had got to the point to where I was walking like hunched over. Mm like after a year and then I, I had started going to massage therapy i went to massage envy yeah, yeah brand deal right there um <laughs> went to massage envy they were taking care of me like everything was like trying to soothe you know what i mean like because i was in pain i was in pain and you know coaching i was coaching basketball from the sideline and i'm a person that's never been sick mm -hmm. i don't take i don't pop medicine mm -hmm. I don't, I don't, my own purpose, my own purpose, my own purpose, my own purpose, not ever, <laughs> and so I was having either. to, huh, you never drink, no, probably, <laughs> <laughs> yes I did, <laughs> <laughs> you did, <laughs> yeah. um, but I would, I was having to take like, Two at least. Sometimes I would take four and not tell nobody mm. just to try to like mm. get my that. yeah. And so anyway, I was going through all that back pain, and then um, I wasn't going to the doctor thinking I'm going to the right doctors. Um, and so it was getting to the point in July of 2017 mm -hmm. that Julian and I got in a minor car accident. Right. And so when we got in that car accident, everything was cool. Like I, I mean, my car is messed up a little bit, but. Um, the only reason I went to the doctor was because the next day Julian was complaining about a headache. Mm -hmm. And so because um, it wasn't my fault and we were going to get more insurance money, um, mm -hmm. if I took him there to get seen, I took him to yeah. get seen and, and really make sure he was okay. Mm -hmm. And then to make sure I got more insurance money, I also got checked. So While greed, we're here. since greed and While we're here. Is what, help, what got you help? And an insurance claim, yeah, yeah. pretty much. Oh, yeah. So, no, but, you know, you're, you're just doing the due diligence. That's what you're just supposed to do, make sure you're fine. Yeah. And so that, that day, I distinctly remember, and it's ironic we're in North Carolina today. Um, I distinctly remember that we, we were going to eat. Mm -hmm. God hit, and I was like, okay, the next day, um, so we couldn't go eat, mm -hmm. right? And then, so, um, we actually made it to the restaurant. They were closed after. Mm -hmm. Next day, um, we were gonna go try to out, go out to the same place. I was like, well, we're gonna stop in the hospital. It's not gonna take long. We're gonna get you mm -hmm. checked out. Mm -hmm. We're gonna be good. So, we got Julian checked out. It took him like 30 minutes. He was like, he's fine. They, and I was like, um, well, I, I was in the accident too. They were like, you should get checked. I was like, okay, fine. Mm -hmm. Got checked. Um, and when it turned was when the doctor came back because um, they took they take your blood they do everything and then she came back and the way the room is set up julian's laying on the bed because it's getting late mm -hmm. i'm sitting towards the door and the doctor comes in so my back is to julian like i'm to Kevin. Mm -hmm. and so um she says well, can I talk to you? And I said, yeah, well, well, yeah, talk to me. Yeah, right. You know, yeah, I'm, I'm here. here to talk. She said, well, I'm yeah. And she's, um, <laughs> well, can I, t am I free to talk freely mm -hmm. in front of your son? And then I, and I kind of mount to her and I said, is, I was like, is everything okay? Mm -hmm. But I, cause I, you know, I, Julian gets scared. Mm -hmm. And so she was like, no. And I said, she said no. No, she did. She said, no. She said, um, what? I don't know. Yeah, and she said no. Still yawning. This is all yawning. All yawning. And I said, okay, okay. Well, what's it? And, I, and she said, and I said, just go ahead and talk. It's it's fine. Because in my there is no. I don't know what this woman's right, gonna right, say. Right. You know what I'm saying? I shouldn't have no STDs. I've not been doing <laughs> nothing. I am fine. I have promise. I don't know what you're gonna say, but right. it ain't gonna be that. It ain't gonna be that. It ain't gonna be that. So she says to me, I looked at your. Um, she says. You're, and she reads the chart, you're 37, you do not drink, you do not smoke, right? Right, I'm reading this. 
Um, you seem pretty healthy. You're not obese. You're not anything. I'm looking at your x-rays. They look horrible. I was like, okay. She says, have you been having back pain or anything? And I said, yeah. Mm -hmm. I have. She was a prophet. Prophet from on high. And so I was like, yeah, I've been going to the chiropractor because back pain. Do you see that? Mm -hmm. They've been working on your boy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She says, well, your bones look really bad, but I think that I, it was, it's so bad that I'm going to do it again. Mm, like this can't be real. Yeah. Let me, let me take your x-ray again. The machine's off. That's how bad it was. She said, I'm going to take it again. I'm going to do some other tests too. Then let's talk about it from there. And I said, okay, cool. So we, do we do it again? We, you know, run it again. I was like, <laughs> run it again. And she comes back. Um, and, uh, she says, and again, she's facing me. She says, I need to talk to you. Mm. And I said, and she said, and I said, well, can we, you can talk. It's fine because I'm ready to go. My son is hungry. She says, oh, you, you're not going to be able to leave. Mm. And I said, what do you mean? I'm not going to, I don't have no warrants. I don't get, there ain't no police coming to get me. Ain't nobody coming to get your boy. <laughs> and she was like, no. She said, um, your, your bones look like it's exactly the same your bones look like you're 70 years old mm. and i said okay and she said it looks like termites have ate away all your bones you have lesions and holes all over your body like all on your bones like everywhere <laughs> and i was like what juju's there juju was right there and he i can feel him sit up mm. and then i was like she's like i'm gonna have to admit you to the hospital i said why no why would you say no i'm like because i'm like i'm like i want to go home to to do tomorrow yeah like i'm like what are you what are you talking like what do you mean? this can't be real I have and i said okay it. what is that like what is that what you're saying mm. and she says that to me looks like cancer Mm. But I'm in the ER, so <laughs> he said, but I'm in the ER. Look that way. Nothing's right. over there. Nothing's over there. I'm looking at these trees. Uh, but I'm in the ER, so I can't give you that. I'm not a cancer doctor. I'm a doctor, mm -hmm. but I'm not the cancer person. Well, I don't want to go there, but if it's me, that's what, what that is. And she said, let me show you what I'm talking about. And she said, your, your x-ray is supposed to be like white, you know. Mm -hmm. You see the gray? There was no white on mine. That's everything that I'm looking at, and that's how bad it is. And I was like, dang. Um, Can we pause for just a minute? Yeah. Before we continue, really quickly, we want to tell you about one of the sponsors for the Love Hour podcast. It is Rothy's. They are friends of the podcast. We, you've heard us talk about them before. They offer amazing shoes. I have a pair. They are quite quite comfortable it literally feels like you're walking on air i have um the black silhouette kind just all mm. black plain silhouette but if you are a person that's more stylish than me child they have all types of styles they have varieties they go great with yoga pants dresses skirts and they come in a wide variety of colors and patterns and they're available in four different silhouettes that called options plus they're constantly launching new styles so you're guaranteed to find a pair that you will love since rothy's are seamlessly crafted from recycled water bottles they're ultra comfortable as soon as you slip them on that's right there's zero break-in period in these shoes that's actually 100 percent true you, you wear these shoes and they feel like they've already been like cracked and molded to pre your feet yeah pre-worn like so comfortable. Rothy's are manufactured in zero waste factory and they ship directly in the shoe box. So no unnecessary packaging, which is amazing because if you're an Amazon shopper and you get a whole bunch of like packaging at your house, it's, your trash can fills up really quickly. And that's like super annoying. Um, these are good, feel good flats in more ways than one. Check out the amazing styles available right now at rothys.com slash love hour. Rothys.com. That's R O T H Y S.com slash love hour to get your new favorite flats, comfortable, uh -huh. stylish, and sustainability. These are the shoes you've been waiting for. Head to rothys.com slash love hour today. today. All right. Today. Continue. Today. Where were we? Um, so this is, you don't want to go, I mean, you're ready to go home, but the guy, the doctor is telling the lady, you, ain't no woman. Home. Okay. So the woman's telling you ain't no going home. Yeah. So I was like, dang, like, I think you called us or maybe the family or text message or something either that night or maybe the morning after the next day. Okay. I got to text my dad. Yeah. I texted dad. Well, was the one who told us. 
Funny thing is, I called dad because, mind you, it's probably going on midnight mm -hmm. now at the hospital. And I have Julian with me, and they're going to admit me. And um, he knows what's going on. And he's like, I, I, is my dad up or something wrong with my dad? Okay, let me breathe. And um, mm. so that was tough, you know what I'm saying? Because he literally caught the news with me. And then so they, I called my dad because I needed, I was like, I need. Um, you need him to go. I, like, can you come pick Julian up? My dad's like, you ain't sick. <laughs> they said that? He was like, he dad was asleep. So he's like, yes, they don't, they in the ER. They, they probably don't know. They're going to do the test tomorrow. They're going to keep you in the hospital. All right, I'll be there in the morning. And mm. I was like, okay. All right, Drew, just says us. <laughs> but he would, I mean, mind you, nobody's expecting that kind of call. Like, dad, this is what they're saying. He's like, I, I know. That's, they're doing that. They probably just give me the precaution. I'm laying down. So let me, what it's going to be is we going we gonna to keep laying. Okay. <laughs> You do what they say. Lay down rest. You'll be fine. I'll be there in the morning. I'll be in the morning when they right. do their diagnosis. Right. So me and Jude um, slept in the hospital. Yeah. Yeah. We went, got admitted to the. Um, um, I, at the time, I didn't know, but they they put me in the hospital. Everything was there. We slept in the same bed. You know, kind of mm -hmm. together. Just it was our pursuit of happiness moment. Mm -hmm. We just laid down together, and then I remember I met my. Uh, oncologist the next day mm -hmm. who's my doctor now dr nazir he's fantastic mm -hmm. and um they had admitted me to the oncology floor mm -hmm. i didn't know that i didn't i didn't know i don't my i don't know nothing about this stuff did you know you you didn't know you were on oncology floor not at all i just thought i was at the hospital like so are you thinking i mean i know they call? said it's called it's cancer but like maybe this isn't the actual real diagnosis maybe in yeah. the morning there's a possibility that all of this is a farce it, and it, wrong exactly i'm my head is still spinning i'm not going crazy mm -hmm, mm -hmm. i'm more wanting to go home yeah, yeah i want yeah, to go to eat eat <laughs> uh, and so i was i was thinking about like it's still going to the place you know so um and 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 when i met him um he he was like i've been doing this 30 years I've seen this a lot. Um, Meaning the cancer. Yeah, mm -hmm. every everything. It's more than just your X-ray. Mm -hmm. They look at your 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 urine sample. They look at your blood. They're mm -hmm. looking at all of that to make the diagnosis. So he's pretty much says, um, I, I had to stay. I was in the hospital two days, and so. That the first day is well, dad came up to the hospital. We met Dr. Nazir. He kind of explained everything again like, this is what we saw, this is what we're looking at, and who he was as 30 years of doing this. Mm -hmm. You know, he's he's like he knows what he's mm -hmm. doing, and so it was more so, um, I'm gonna try to let you out the hospital tomorrow. When I let you out the hospital, do not pass go, do not collect 200, do not go to your house you come see me at the cancer center immediately. Mm. My question to Dr. Nazir was like, well, where am I in the thing, mm. in the cancer stuff, mm. in the paperwork, you right. know, on the level? And he says, well, your cancer has three stages. You are in stage three. Oh, wow. And I was like, geez, Louise, I just started off the game <laughs> wrong, you know? Um, and so I was like, I was like, okay. And then, so now my dad's there. And, you know, my dad's really good at taking information mm -hmm. and getting it out to everybody. And so I was like, Dad, just send everybody the information. Like, let them know what you just got. Mm -hmm. And so that's when the family got the text um, about it, um, letting them, letting everybody know. And then, you know, um, you know, the number to the hospital and stuff. And then I think we all talked mm -hmm. at some point. And at that time, I'm still... Um, I haven't been officially diagnosed. Mm -hmm. So the way they officially diagnose you is they they he wanted me to come to the cancer center because he wanted to prepare me for a biopsy. The biopsy is equivalent to the woman thinks she's pregnant at home, she does the test, you go to the hospital, you get the blood test. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. to so confirm. the yeah, the confirm. So what they do is they go um in the 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 top of your hip, right on top of your your behind on your back. Um, in that hip bone right there, um, they try to numb your skin and then they go into the bone and they pull it out. 
multiple myeloma is a cancer of the blood and the bone marrow. So your bone marrow doesn't create, doesn't produce any anything else, which is why my bones looked old. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I, I wasn't creating- So they're like just deteriorating. Pretty, I was falling in front and mm -hmm. falling apart. And so he said, most people do not have any symptoms. So the, your first symptom is you usually break a bone. Mm -hmm. And the funny thing is because I coach basketball, I remember we were in a scrimmage and we're girl, against girls, varsity girls. And uh, mind you, and one of the girls was posting me up and she hit me with an elbow. When I tell you that is the worst elbow, mm. she didn't hit me that hard, but I thought I You're broke Mr. a Glass. rib. That was Mr. Glass. Wow. I thought I broke a rib. I was like, good luck. This is before I got diagnosed. It was, it was hurt for like three weeks. I was oh, like, I don't know dang, why. this a long time. Yeah, but, but when what I what looked. What is this girl on? Right. But when I looked back at it, it was, it was because of that. It, it was that. So most people like. You'll randomly like try to lift yourself up and you'll break your mm -hmm. wrist, your forearm, your so your fault. Yeah, and you won't know, and then you'll go in and be like, I don't know, I just broke a bone, I fell down, and and then they'll they'll, they'll usually tell you. And so, what was alarming for uh, Doctor Nazir? He's the calmest doctor in the world. First of all, he talks. You're gonna be fine. Mm -hmm. You're gonna be fine. <laughs> We're gonna take you. We're going to do some tests. He really is that is that calming. Uh, comforting or is that like frustrating? It's it's actually calming. Is it okay? Yeah, I like because I would be people just want to know they want they're gonna be okay. Yeah. I don't think I want to be okay, but Might I feel like I would also have true. so many raw emotions that sometimes I would be like, "Are you playing me? Are you being?" Specific? He knows how to lie to you mm. because he could not. I, I, me, I want to know the process. Mm -hmm. What do I have to do yeah. to get to the end so I could be done with it? But he was like, okay, you have to go through this. We have to start your treatments. We have to, after you do your treatments, then we're going to have to send you to Duke for uh, a stem cell transplant. Hold on. Wait, sir. That's a lot of information. That's what I said. But I was like, what's that like? He said, this first. Don't worry about it. Mm. Mm, that's a word right there. It is. This, don't worry about that. We have to get to there. So that's probably an in treatment mm -hmm. to try to close out your treatment. He, he makes it like it's, that's over here. We have to do this first, but I'm just letting you know the process since you asked, but don't even really think about yeah. it right now. You know what I'm saying? So um, he has to do my biopsy and that was tough um, because one, it, I mean, it hurts one, but it's not the hurt. I was by myself. Mm. So I, I walk in, I drive myself to the cancer center like uh, the day after when I could, when they schedule me, um, they take the, all this blood. Dad's at work, keep, keep dueling with his friends, um, you know, and, and people wonder where Tammy Tammy's in Chicago. Okay, I was time. just going to say, do you want to go down the path of like where Tammy is? Yeah, okay. I will. Tammy, Tammy's in Chicago okay. at this time. Uh, we're living separate. We're separated mm -hmm. at the time. So... Um, I have to take this. My grandma's not there. We're not there. My, you're not. You guys are in LA. My mom. I don't. My mom was gone. But also, your mom doesn't drive. My mom doesn't drive. Um, she, she's seeing impaired, hearing impaired. She, yes, she's gonna be there for support. But she was. She wasn't even there, like in mm -hmm. town. Mm -hmm. Um, I re, I remember that distinctly because that's why I was. I needed somebody to get Juju for me. Mm -hmm. And I think eventually one of his buddies got him, if I remember my memory serves, one of our friends like mm -hmm. got him for for me. So it was difficult because I had to go there by myself and then like you're walking into the cancer center mm -hmm. and you're reading the signs and it's the cancer place and you're seeing all these people. Is that people. overwhelming? Yes. And then you see all these people getting treatment and then there's it's, you smell the chemo. Chemo has this smell. After a while, it made me sick, mm. like the smell of it. And then so I remember, um, okay, I'm trying to breathe because I don't want to get emotional about it. Because you think about it, it's it's trauma in your mind. I didn't know just, it's just like you. the memories are right there. This was last year. Mm -hmm. So, you know, well, two year, that part was two years ago, but the transplant was last year. So um, I walk and do the biopsy, walk in to do the biopsy, and I remember... The, laying there he has me on my side because i have to turn you on your side mm -hmm. and um he has to go on your back and he's talking smoothly to you and i was like he said you can put your music in your ears mm -hmm. you know and i put the music in my ears and i was just crying because i was by myself mm -hmm. what were you listening to what kind of music i don't know I, I don't know do you remember i don't know music. i have Please no idea music. i don't even remember i just put music on i just 
and I was just like, I was by myself, and he was like, does it hurt? And he's like, it, it, I was like, it hurts, and he's like, it's okay, you know, you're gonna be fine, you're gonna, you know, and he, he did a good job of walking me through, but I was just like, there's nobody here. Oh, Jesus. And it was tough, you know? I'm not crying, I anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I, it, it was. was I, did, I looked at the window the whole time. I, I it was not. no because you're you're just like, like this is my world, yeah. and it's so sudden too. You're just living your life normal, yeah. And one day, and the thing about cancer, like for for us, it was. Well, I don't even, you know, to yeah. don't wipe it off like a man. Uh, <laughs> I do it like this. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. I don't want it off with a knife. We didn't have no nobody in our family. Yeah, nobody There's had other it. stuff in our family, but yeah. never that. And cancer is such a... That late stage. First of all, we have no... Reference. Understanding is just bad. That's what I'm saying. I'm and sorry, not, you guys what? What is that? And it's How not a cancer you've really it? heard of. It's, it's, it's not something you've really heard of. It's not passed down. Mm -hmm. It wasn't hereditary. Yeah. Not something I got from mom or dad or grandma. Like my grandma had that too. It was I was I'm the first one. You weren't like, like a drinker who got liver cancer or a smoker right. who got lung right, cancer. Right, right, yeah. right, right. A woman who, who got, got breast, breast cancer. cancer. It wasn't anything like that. It was something that mutated in my blood. That's one thing I said to him. I said this to you the other day, and I was like, man, there's I, I'm I don't do nothing anything. to get can I don't do the cancer stuff. Right, I don't right, do right. anything. Why am I a 37 year old getting this? And he turned to me, and this is when it got real. He said, I have patients that are children. And he's, there's no age. Cancer doesn't have an age. It doesn't, doesn't have a look. It doesn't, doesn't discriminate to any age or anybody, man, woman, boy, child, grandma, grandpa, mom, dad, auntie, uncle, niece, nephew. It doesn't, brother, sister. You know what I'm saying? So. And, and and that right there let me know I was like I'm I'm just you know an average person, um, but like the laying there by yourself part is like just me and God, you know. Okay. So that was it was it was it was tough, you know, you know. But I got, it's like tough, okay. But I got through it. That's like the first part of it. I remember when I had the the heart thing. Remember? Yeah, the heart that scared, was scary, man. man. And I was by myself. <laughs> Shoot. <laughs> and it was just when you are unsure of what's happening. Yeah. I remember they came in, they did an EKG because I was feeling faint at work at right. the daycare. I was running right. around with the kids like I do, and I'm like, man, I feel like I'm gonna pass out. And you know, I drove myself to the ER, but they took an EKG and they and they were like, oh snap! And then a whole bunch of doctors came in mm -hmm. and they're like, something's off about this. And Lisa was at work; she couldn't yeah. have her phone. Everybody, you worked in the state, you could have your phone. You Nobody could have yeah. their phone. And I'm calling people, and nobody's answering, mm -hmm. and they're like, "Oh man, this is not like you should call someone." And I'm calling people, and nobody's answering, and I'm like, "It's it. I, like, it just, just being alone. The alone is hard. Lot, yeah. It's tough." And that was just one day of my life, right? You know what I mean? Like, shoot, go ahead, man. No, I want to do this episode, Melissa. <laughs> I told you uh, we could have did listener questions. We're gonna talk about Esther Morel and all with Jason's here. I have been had been on my heart. And now I gotta cry and be tired all night. You know, I already been tired. <laughs> I've been crying. I've done cry too. We're not crying no more. We are. Okay, we didn't even get started it. good. Come on. And I told you I don't. I'm eating ice cream. I'm eating ice cream. I'm eating ice, ice cream after this. I don't care what y'all say. I don't care about the stupid way. I'm getting milkshakes. I'm getting steaks. I'm eating it all. I deserve it. Extra oh, cheese on my steak, terrible. please. While we're talking about eating better, we have to also talk about better options um, that are out there for you, and that is Green Chef. We've talked about again Green Chef many a times on the podcast. Kevin and a hot and a hive and hive. Kevin and I recently had the Thai quinoa bowl. It is delicious. It has the makings of a really good meal that you feel good about making for your children. It has avocado, broccoli, pineapples, carrots, peanuts, and lime. It has a quinoa base. It's just like a little bowl. It's really fantastic. Um, and what you need to know about Green Chef is that they are a USDA certified organic company that makes eating well easy and affordable with plants to fit every kind of lifestyle. Meal plants include paleo, vegan, vegetarian, pescatarian, keto, gluten-friendly, and omnivore 
options. With Green Chef, it's easy to eat well and discover new recipes every week that you'll love to cook. Green Chef makes cooking easy with dinner options that work around your lifestyle, not the other way around. Everything is hand-picked and delivered right to your door. Recipes include pre-made measured sauces, dressings, and spices so you can get more flavor in less time, which makes it super easy to make the meals because you're not measuring and spilling stuff all over your countertop. Um, Green Chef is a USDA certified organic company that makes eating well easy and affordable with plans to fit every kind of lifestyle. I think I said that. For a total of $75 off, that's $25 off each of your first three boxes, go to greenchef.us slash lovehour75. Again, that's greenchef.us slash lovehour75. We also want to tell you about Lola. Lola is a female founded company offering a line of organic cotton tampons, pads, liners, and all natural cleansing wipes. Lola's subscription is fully customizable and you can choose your mix of products, mix of absorbency, number of boxes, and frequency of delivery. Lola's subscription is super flexible. You can change, skip, or cancel your subscription at any time. Subscriptions are the best because you don't have to think about ensuring that you have things on stock in your house, which is one of my favorite things. Take all the to-do lists, make it simple. Lola is known for its line of period products made from organic cotton. Lola additionally offers sex products made with women in mind. It's woman first. Sex by Lola is a line of gynecologist approved sexual health and wellness products, lubricated condoms, personal lubricant, and cleansing wipes designed first and foremost for women. The Sex by Lola line is also available for subscription. You can add to your period subscription so everything is conveniently de delivered on your ideal schedule. Um, so for 40% off your first month subscription, visit mylola.com and enter love hour when you subscribe. You guys already know we have the um, lubrication and... We uh, have sex with it. I put it on a weenie. <laughs> <laughs> you said weenie. <laughs> I'm going to get these tears away from me. I'm going to tell you I'm that. I'm going to try to, I guess, bring levity to the episode. Oh my God. Um, so we have weenie. you Lola, um, you should try it. It's fantastic. It's not messy. Um, it adheres really well and it's made with women in mind, which is what all of us need. So again, for 40% off your first month subscription, visit mylola.com and enter love hour when you subscribe. Love hour. Come on, Kim. All right, here we go. Questions. Okay. Are we dead? Okay. Why did you do this? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I'm not gonna ask that. Not no, ask. No, ask. That's the question. Make me cry. Ask that question, Kev. What? As a as a dad, you have you have multiple children of various ages. What is it like? Because I think I feel like my biggest. So when you told me, I think it's human nature to assume the worst, and um, mm -hmm. you're not thinking about that. Before that, we were literally planning the tour, man. We were, we were this, planning the tour. to do all this stuff. Um, it's going to be lit. You know, blah blah right. blah. We're gonna. Be, we were we were doing uh, all type of stuff. So when you have to tell your 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 children, your mm -hmm. wife, what was that like? And even though you, your, you and your wife were separated at the time, yeah. what was that like having those conversations with those people? Can because, you start with your kids and then go to your wife? Because I want to tell well, you. Well, um, what I did is um, I, I, I tried to have someone else let them know what was happening with me okay versus was it too hard for you or it... no it's just at the time I, I was all over the place mm -hmm. just with the doctor stuff really mm -hmm. and then so i had my dad send out the information and then um i had i had tammy um talk to the kids okay mm -hmm. like let them know what's going on with dad so then that way because it's gonna come with a string of questions. Yeah. And then you yeah. have all the information to fill those questions. And then also me, it's always let them know I'm okay. Let them know I'm okay. I'm fine. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna be all right. That's that's me. Not that I'm not, something's not wrong, but right. that I'm gonna be okay. I don't, my, my biggest thing was I don't want you them don't to want be scared. scared. Yeah. I don't want them to be scared of what's, what's happening um, and what's going on. I remember, um, uh, Jason Jr. and Julian uh, were at the house. Those are um, two youngest sons. Yeah, two youngest. And um, I had I had started some meds that they were were giving me, and I'm and I'm in the shower, 
and um, I, I, um, I got dizzy. Mm -hmm. Bad, like I've never been dizzy before, mm -hmm. like room spinning, uh, you know, I, I, and so I got super scared. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so um, I tried to get out and I'm just gonna dry off and I was, you know, dry off and I, and I was doing okay. And I was like, okay, I have to make it to the room. If I could just get to the bed. And lay down. And lay down, I'll be fine. And so um, they were downstairs. Mm -hmm. And so I said, okay, I'm gonna go. I got myself together, opened the door um, to walk out and I passed out and I hit my head mm -hmm. on the, um, on the dresser or something and they heard it and they came up they ran upstairs and then uh, my mom was downstairs too and i and i just remember telling them get me up so your grandma doesn't know mm. because and then i was like and they were like well, are you okay we heard you hit your head dad and i'm like i'm i'm, I'm okay i just i'm i'm fine you know yeah. what i mean like my thing is be fine in front of them you know what i'm saying not that i'm trying to like I just don't want them to worry. You know, yeah, because I remember the first night that I had chemo, um, they were there, mm -hmm. and the first day I had chemo, and if you if you get a fever, they want you to come right to the hospital. I started getting a fever, and they're there, so they're like, um, my dad was in the room checking me out. I couldn't really move; I was done. And and um, the boys came in. He's like, they get out, get out. I was like, no, no, no let them stay. Mm -hmm. And he was trying to protect them, but I was like, let him, I'm, guys, I'm all right. I'm just not feeling great. So I have to go to the doctor. Got you. I have to go to the hospital. I have to, have to do that. So I try to keep my strength in those moments, mm -hmm. um, for them. And, um, that was, that's, that, that's probably the dad in me, like mm -hmm. trying to, you know, protect your kids from that stuff. You know what I'm saying? Because I, I you know, I don't, it was, um. I'm just being honest. You don't know if you're going to die. I'm just so being I, honest. I know. So, okay. So, let's go through, like, the, the portion with your wife, like, on that note. Okay. So, with Tammy. Yeah. For the people that don't know, his, his wife's name is Tammy. Uh, with Tammy, like, how do you have that conversation? You guys are separated. How does that work? And how are you feeling in the face of this diagnosis in terms of your relationship, what the rest of your life looks like? Like, how does that all... Well, for, for me, it was um, like, you know, they're, they're technically Julian was visiting me, mm -hmm. you know. Um, it's seven. Yeah. And so um, it was, you know, for her, she, you know, she heard and, you know, of course, we reached out, we talked, we, we talked, you know, all the time, not regularly, like sure. that, but enough. And so, you know, her sympathetic, you know, just asking whatever she, and she's just saying she's going to be there and do everything that she needed to do. And, you know, you hear, oh, okay, that's great. Mm -hmm. Like, actually, you know, if being honest, that it, it kind of helped my family come back together. Mm -hmm. You know, this, it's, you know, God works in mysterious ways because we were, I mean, just on a road to ending our relationship, mm -hmm. you know, and so a pretty fast road over the past, like, couple years mm -hmm. leading up to that mm -hmm. and so which is you know physical separation like literally location separation it was pretty much headed down that way and then that right there was you know the Hail Mary the saving grace and it makes you realize what matters mm -hmm. it, makes you, it makes you realize what matters because all the little things that were the differences in the relationship and the marriage and the family, uh, all of that goes, goes out the away. door because now you're dealing with this is what's real. The, uh, the other states make the the yeah. The state. I seen this meme going around say, if you threw your problems on the ground, everybody threw their problems on the ground, yeah. you're more than likely to pick yours back up. Yeah. When I mean, you have a problem like that, that's like an existential crisis, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. it makes the other stuff. And it's not that the stuff you were probably going through wasn't bad. Real. It's just in the face of this. literal death. Mm -hmm. It's like, yeah. okay, well, you, you know, we talking about, you know, you don't, whatever you do or right. don't do, that, pro that probably puts that stuff into perspective, uh, right. puts perspective differently than not having that, that type of, you know, threat to yes. your life. Yes. And, and, and that's what it was. And so, um, she just tried to do everything. Uh, Tam she, Tammy's amazing that way. She is one of those people that is, um. Like a natural caregiver. Yeah. Right. Boys are with her right now. Natural 
caregiver. Yeah, definitely. Definitely going to make sure you're taking care of her. And that's what she she turned back into that for mm -hmm. me, mm -hmm. you know. So um, even to the fact of, you know, I was still, I couldn't leave the state if I wanted to because my treatment was in North Carolina and they're in um, Illinois. And so uh, Kayla actually came to live with me mm -hmm. um, at the time because and her and my relationship wasn't the best mm -hmm. all the time because you know whatever was going on with me and her mother mm -hmm. and me and her individually but she was like you know that's daddy's sick i want to be there and so she actually came to live with me because she would help me through there was times that night that kayla's very much like her mother mm -hmm. i'd be throwing up she'd be cleaning up my throw up like um, I would run to the bathroom to clean up. She, she would do everything mm -hmm. for me. Everything. Everything. You know, like, I, I'd literally be throwing up and, and, and I'd be leaning there. She's over there. She's rubbing on my back. Mm -hmm. And then she's, uh, like, laying over me. And then I'll make a joke, like, this is really gross, huh? And she's like, yes. But it's fine. And I'll clean it up. Like, don't worry about it. Like, and don't worry about it. Kayla, I need some water. I got it. She knows how to make it perfectly. Mm -hmm. She knows how to like it. She and she would just they all those things were happening, you know, for me. And it was, you know, building our relationship. So um um like again I could remember at some point I couldn't travel anymore. Mm -hmm. So um they were traveling to see me all the time. Um but it really got um I mean so during that time I mean you coast you're kind of rebuilding uh, the your relationship, relationship. On, on the strength of what's happening and what's real. That's what right. I'm trying to say. What's real meaning what matters. Right. And then when it gets to the transplant time, um, she literally made sure she came back and was there with me all those months going through that to be my number one caregiver. Mm -hmm. um, like you had to go to the hospital, do hospital and take a class. You mm -hmm. had to get all these make sure you had shots remember you guys yeah, couldn't yeah, even yeah, touch yeah. me because you didn't have all the right shots or whatever you needed to see me so she went through that um and then all was out of season flu shot was out to go and it was out of season couldn't even like, get it anywhere um you couldn't come near me if you didn't have that yeah. we was over um, here like yeah <laughs> yeah and then then um not only that even on the financial side mm -hmm. like i'm not being funny i mean i wasn't broke but she was like I'm going to take care of this. I'm going to like, don't worry about it. Lay down, rest, do your thing. I got it covered. You know what yeah. I mean? So it was all those things happening at that time. So, you know, that was the in sickness and in health. Mm -hmm. I was in sickness. She made sure that to, that you she lived, no, no matter what our situation was, mm -hmm. that her, no matter what her differences were with me, she said my vow as a wife was in sickness and in health and she took care of her part in the sickness i listen model citizen you know what's crazy before we get to your part list it's amazing that usually you would think it's the other way around mm -hmm. like the, the, the health part we we argue in the sickness part you know be like oh shoot if we ain't good in the healthy part i'm definitely not gonna be right you know but for her the sickness part is what like clicked in like oh right. snap I'm gonna be there for for him right in a way that you know you would normally if everything was on the you know normal situation but if you're separated in that sick the it, it's amazing how a, a negative thing brought a positive oh, reaction okay. yeah yeah positive reaction. yeah um so we're gonna take another break we're gonna tell you about meltdown by bloom um if you follow this podcast for any period of time or you just follow me you know that I have um very acne prone skin. I break out at least once a month. I have like very hormonal breakouts. Um, and so I use Meltdown by Bloom. It is a powerful blend of natural ingredients that take down takes down pimples overnight. It's a unique blend of essential oils, include, which includes cumin seed oil, rose hip oil, and tea tree leaf oil. And tea tree leaf oil is amazing. Literally, you can use tea tree oil on like most things and it works. Meltdown reduces the size and redness of pimples overnight and they completely disappear within three to four days. In addition, it does not contain any harsh chemicals, no benzoyl peroxide, salicylic acid, sulfates, or parabens. Um, salicylic acid and benzoyl peroxide 
is very drying and you don't want, cause then your skin gets patchy and if you try to put foundation over patchy dry skin, mm -hmm. it'd be looking a mess, you don't wanna do that. So it doesn't cause skin to peel, be dry, flake or scar, and it even helps with fading scars. It's vegan, cruelty free and pregnancy safe. And it's backed by a 30 day satisfaction guarantee so you can try it risk free. Right now, our listeners get 25% off and free shipping when you text the word OUR to 797979. This is a special offer you can't get anywhere else, and you support the Love Hour when you support our sponsors. So text the word OUR to 797979 to get 25% off Meltdown Blemish Treatment by Bloom. That's B-L-U-M-E. If you don't love it, return it for a full refund. No questions asked. Text OUR, that's H-O-U-R, to 797979. Thank you, Bloom, for sponsoring the podcast. All right. So in sickness and in health and being like fully testing what that means, like how do you think that has impacted your relationship now a year and a half post-diagnosis, post-system cell plan, transplant, like the space that you're in and like your meaning of life? Oh man, well the meaning of life has totally changed because, um, I mean, honestly, I feel like I'm on borrowed time. Mm. And so because I don't, I don't, you know, I still go to the doctor. Mm -hmm. Don't you have to, to go this weekend? Tomorrow. Yeah. I'm going to the doctor tomorrow. I still have to take medicine. Mm -hmm. You know, they call it maintenance therapy mm -hmm. um, to where I still take quote unquote chemo pills. Um, doesn't really I mean it just suppresses what's going on in your body. Um, not that doesn't like I'm hurting or it's not like that. It mm -hmm. just really like feels like like a baby aspirin doesn't really there's no feeling or anything to it. And so it's something that I'm going to be dealing with for my life. So it's almost like Paul take the thorn out of my side. Mm. It's not going to take it out. And so you're just gonna have to live, live with, with it. This. Yeah, and um, because technically, because they can't kill the gene as of today, they don't call it cured. They they say that you're in remission and that you're doing well. We're gonna keep it like this. This is how we're gonna keep fighting it. Um, and when you do a stem cell transplant, they take enough for two transplants. They take mm. enough out of your body because they expect you, they don't know how many years, um, they expect you to like go relapse. back in, yep, go back in, and then you're gonna need it again. I'm not doing it again. Really? It, no, I don't listen. Love y'all. Wait, I wasn't quite ready for that. I'm not. This is too hard. It is mentally. It's no. probably the rush. No. <laughs> rush. Run. I'm, not, I'm not even acknowledging that statement. No. Therefore, I can just look this way. Yeah. It's it's not like that, but it's just at a time like. It is, it is, it is too rough. I was able to make it through that because of you guys. And when I say you guys, it's because of my family. Like, we had stuff to look forward to. We had the tour stuff. Mm -hmm. We had the stuff that everything like we're doing right now. I, my kids, mm -hmm. all those things. Like, like, if I wasn't going to be there to be a dad, who was going to be a dad? I got to fight. I got to, I got to do it. There was time. I, I'm just being truthful. There was times that I said, I can't do it anymore. Nobody knew that. But I was like, I'm going to keep going. I remember talking to Bishop mm -hmm. and I was my boy Landon, um, one of my best friends. And um, he's on the phone. I had stopped going to my treatments like they know I was coming late. I was coming late because I wasn't coming. But they know this of, of patience. Right, 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 right. Because right. they'd be like, patients don't be coming. And I and I'll come in the lady Brenda, shout out to Brenda. She's one of our fans on here. And I would and I would be like I'd be like two hours late. Because and I said the whole appointment. No, and they'll and they'll see you. Because they, they know how hard that. it is right, for you to right, come. Right. And I said, Brenda, I wasn't coming. She said, I know. But I'm glad you're here. And it's gonna be okay and you're gonna be all right and you're you, you know you're not the only patient that goes through that it's natural to not want to do that but you got to keep coming yeah. you got to keep doing it and so it had got to the point like those shots in your stomach remember i was telling you like yeah. the food you can't you can't taste anything i had lost like 40 plus pounds I and i couldn't then. i couldn't eat anything i remember was it last year kev or I don't know, where we did. I told you I didn't want to talk about this. 
where we did you Thanksgiving. Didn't care when I thought. Oh, Thanksgiving were in Vegas. And when we were in oh. Vegas. Yeah. It was I was it was rough. It was the worst. Was we worse. went to uh, Bahama, Bahama Breeze. Breeze. Oh yeah. And literally walking from the sidewalk to or the parking lot into the restaurant and like you needed a break. Yeah. I remember like how like tight like fatigued you were like the whole mm -hmm. time and we were like Jay is sick. Yeah, mm -hmm. I remember yeah, I, you guys It's did. funny. Hold on, let me just mm -hmm. stop you right there. It's funny though because if you would text or call or whatever, and I didn't talk to you that much, but I would I would, yeah. I would ask Kevin like how he was doing whatever. Y'all don't be talking about who I would always no. watch out to and I would Not your business frustrate anyway. me to no end, but that's a different story. Um, I would be like We don't be talking about Y'all I didn't want to talk about this today. Oh my god It used to make me so mad But even in when you did It was always It'll be okay mm -hmm. I'm alright And then to see you I was expecting some level of like Obviously he's not okay But I was still expecting some level of like energy mm -hmm. And so to actually see you It was like you were like a brittle old man. This is yeah. not, he's sick, sick, and he's not telling us. And so then I would just text Tammy. Yeah, she was the only one that said the truth. She was dad is, one. dad be like, oh, it's fine, and God is blessed. You know, <laughs> all that stuff. And Tam was like, no, he had a terrible day today, actually. He's actually had a couple bad weeks. Yes. But do this, and that Tam actually didn't really want you to come on a tour like that this year. In the beginning, she was texting me. She was like, Kev, hey, just check him because he ain't going to tell you the truth. You got to watch him. She Make was. Sure. And I was about to be like, bro, you know, I, know I, I was like this close to being like, You were almost off. You no, say the yes, word. You no, yes, you were. No, I wasn't. Yes, you were. No, His bones. His bones. He <laughs> <laughs> broke his bones. I ain't going to lie to you. I was like, Tammy got one good time to be like, no. Nah. Right. No, I I don't know what I was gonna say. Uh, your outlook on life. Oh, well, Thanksgiving. Yeah, but I'm oh, gonna yeah. say this about this that that was me being well oh, because I would purposely not take my medicine to make sure I'm a little bit better mm. to be around because I tried. I wanted to enjoy it. You know, I wanted to enjoy being around everybody because i'm being honest at the time i didn't know like is this going to be my last thanksgiving you know i didn't i didn't know i i really did. the way that i was feeling i was like if it if i have to go through the transplant after this you did do the transplant afterwards yeah because that next like we went to thanksgiving and then i had my transplant appointment with the um with duke and so um, they were, my mom and dad went and they were going to, they, they explained everything that you have to do. I'm coming in as weak as I was from mm -hmm. things, probably worse. Mm -hmm. um, I was actually on my the regular medicine at the time. And then I'm talking to my doctor. He's telling me how strong the chemo is. He's telling me everything that I have to do, what has to go on my body. And I'm looking at them like, not me. I'm... I can't. Do you really? feel like you lost the will? I I lost. I did. I lost because it. If anybody that's had cancer or any kind of disease knows that the mind mm -hmm. is the hard mm -hmm. thing. It's hard because I am going to this place so they can put these chemicals in me so they can make me sick. Mm -hmm. When they put the stuff in me, I feel sick. I don't want the stuff in me. I rather deal with everything else and just feel fine. You know what I'm saying? Um, all the people in the comments that are saying, you need to do the natural treatment. It don't work like that. So right, just right, right. believe me. Um, so they'll be like, you just need to drink uh, Ginger, this kind of water yes. and do this. It does, it's it doesn't see me. It doesn't see me. Listen, it's, it's no perfect science. Yeah, right, right. It is what it is. Not that that doesn't work, but that ain't my case. Mm -hmm. So... You know, it was, th there was no way I was going to be able to do it. I pushed, I postponed my transplant. I remember you postponed it more than once. Yeah. If my memory serves me yeah, correctly. Because I remember Tammy was like. She, I was, she was like, like talk to him. She hit me. She was like, talk to him. I was like, what am I going to tell him? I, to I was scared. I bet you were. You I was scared. scared. I told him. I was. I said, I'm, I, I can't do it. I told my dad, I said, I'm not strong enough to do it. I, I, I was 
I, I knew I, I was like, I'm not strong enough to do it. Like, the doctor was like, you are. You're, you're this young. I'm, trust me, you're going to be okay. I was like, you ain't me. This hurts. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not, like, I can't. If, if it's, they're like, you had JV chemo. We about to give you the varsity. You're like, I can't hang with the JV. I can't do it. Like, I was like, I told my dad, I said, dad. I'm not gonna do it to my grandma. You know what I'm telling my grandma. I'm here for real. I said, Mom, I can't do it. And you can do it. She's, you can, Dad, Dad, hey, you can do it. And then you know, when when the kids are like, you gotta do it. You gotta, you gotta, we need you to do it. So I finally was like, I'm gonna do it. And then I said, okay, just just give me to this time. Let me get my body strong. Mm -hmm. Cause that's what I felt. I felt like I was super weak. Mm -hmm. Like, and I was like, if I go, it's like, you know, you're trying to train for a fight and right, like, right. I, I, I needed like, I hadn't been able to eat food. Right, so right. I was like, and you're gonna do all this to me. There's no way that I can put all that. Like, let me at least like get some food in my body and start eating like. And so they said, okay, we're gonna take you off your meds. Eat, get strong. You're ready. You can do it. And so they gave me a couple months, and then my levels weren't at what they wanted when I first came back. And then that's what took it a little bit longer. And then I started second guessing again. Mm. And then I finally just said, okay, I'm gonna do it. And then I said, the last thing I want to do is coach basketball. I said, I wanted to go to my brother's party. Oh, that's right. I wanted to go to Kev's party. And I wasn't going to come. And, and oh, because I, I really wasn't supposed to travel. I was getting close to that time. And Kev was like, I want you to come. And I wanted to come. It was a surprise. Yeah, you were doing it. Right. Yeah, it I didn't know, yeah. but it was a surprise. Yeah, and so I I came. I wanted to come to Kev's party. And that was the last thing I did before. Like, I went to Kev's party. I left. And then I came to North Carolina to to start the process of it. Because I didn't know. Like, I didn't know. I just, you know, you don't, I've never been through anything. You know what I'm saying? Like that. So I was just like, man. You know, at least let me have a ball. You know what I mean? Are you ever thinking like beyond like I want to have a good time? Do you ever think I want my brother's last memory of me to be? Right. Oh. All the time. <laughs> this is what's going to make me cry. I'm not crying right now. So, I'm so mad at Melissa right now. You <laughs> yeah, don't man. Because so you're so I'm trash. I'm so mad yeah. at Melissa right now. I'm sorry. We should go celebrate I, I, Dope I, Boy after this out. I begged her not to do this. Right. I begged no. her. No, we, um. We don't even have the same dad and we feel this strong. <laughs> Imagine we have the same dad. He's stupid. Call no. Dado right now. Oh, no, Dado's don't. fault. That's why we're so close. He came in and fixed it. He's on Russell Wilson. Mm -hmm. We had future as that. He taught us how to throw footballs. He had slick hair. It's slick hair. He made the mom Sierra, bought her masters. She that's didn't have the money for her masters. That is so funny. Um, no. I'm not getting up. <laughs> Me and Kev are really close. Lissa finds it very odd. It's very hard for us to talk about. Man, I used to be so frustrated. This, because it implies that probably our relationship will change you know one might not be there you know what i'm saying like we i don't know what we haven't done together you know i mean i didn't work at ADD. <laughs> you know what i'm saying so i uh, you know but like i man you know like we're just getting our stuff eight we work hard eight, for eight, all eight, that's what it is getting it. 813 destello that's our address in el paso texas in a duplex mm -hmm. Raised with nine people and a dog. I don't know why we had a dog at the time. We'll talk yeah, about that money for the dog. Really Living in bunk dog. beds together. You know what I mean? Like going through it. Like the stuff that I'm talking about when we're poor, we played together. To, like that's where our creative comes from. Right. All those things that we did together. You know, the stuff that he talks about that he looks up to me for. 
all those, you know, that's, that's going to be gone. It's like, it's not fair. So it's, it's hard to, to do it. And like, for me now, that's why, like, even in my job or position now, like, you're going to pay my brother what he's worth, period. You know what I mean? Like, if, if I couldn't do anything, we're going to make sure you're going to do my brother right. You know what I mean? Like, that's that's like my call. You know what I'm saying? To, that's my big brother, right. you know, in me to do those things, to make sure it's there. Um, because it's just, like, I, I'm being honest, guys. Like, I, be, I don't be knowing what's going to happen with me. Oh, man, you know what I'm saying? And so I'm fine right now. I'm, I'm fine. I'm good. Like, all that but at the end of the day because that happened it's like you better live your life you better you better make it happen you better say what you need to say to this person you better you better take care of kids like i remember I rem go ahead i remember talking to juju one time and i was just telling him and he was like well I, I was like saying like when you go to school you make sure you read and you do your homework you do this is after i got diagnosed he's like okay I was like, no, are you listening to me? Mm -hmm. He's like, yeah, I'm listening to you. I said, you got to listen to me. Because I don't know if I don't, like, I didn't know. Everything matters. Everything matters. And I just had to calm down because I was getting frustrated because I was like, my words, everything, I'm trying to teach you everything that I know. I'm trying to, I'm trying to make sure you understand. Like, like, yeah, like I'm trying to give you everything that I got because I don't know what's going to happen with me, you know? And so I try to do that for all my kids best I can, best I can, you know? It's not perfect. It's not a per all my kids don't live with me, but I, I talk to them, but I try to do best I can to be there for them. But it's just, you know, I just remember those things. And so that when you think about where's your outlook on life and all that, so it's just everything matters. Hey, how much is it to go to Europe? Oh, that credit card. F that credit card. Not that I'm not yes, trust. No. Yes. yes. Yeah, you That's know what I be on. It's, it's, and this would be like, no, no. We say, man, we don't yeah. know where we're going. We're going right. to Amsterdam. Right. And we staying in the expensive hotel. That, that That's what I'm saying. It's like, you know what? And make sure Tam tells me she get that time off of work. And if she don't, take it anyway. Who cares about that stupid job? <laughs> that and it's like that Shoot. responsibly. Right. Nah, responsible. nah. <laughs> ain't no responsibly. <laughs> Shut up. I'm going to Spain. You ain't gonna whoop me. What's up? Oh my god. And I'm gonna be on the ground. No, I'm not gonna hide my post. Go whoop me yeah. though. Yeah. I'm gonna keep my post up. I'm going to England. Right. Oh my gosh. But that you know what I mean? Yes, so it's yes. like yes. Can we be done with this? <laughs> Yes, yes, everybody dang. happy, happy. I made it through the transfer. Dang, I'm so mad at Melissa. <laughs> oh my God. This podcast for this damn AC. <laughs> Bye. Thank you guys. Thank this you for healthy. I'm, I'm healthy. Dallas, Gosh, we'll man. be there tonight. tonight. We're there tonight. We're there tonight. Through the weekend. Friday is the only time we have tickets left. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Out of my ear. Turn this off. <laughs> you know how to wipe it. I don't know how many times. Did you turn it off? Oh, <laughs> <Turn> it off. <laughs>